guys. Um, well, welcome, welcome to Quarantine Creatively. Um, we're doing something different. Uh, so we're going to be mostly drawing this class, if not all of class. Um, I know that sounds scary, but it's not going to be scary, I promise. Um, we're doing something different. I pulled you guys on Twitter and asked like, hey, would you be interested in a project that is not just one hour um, that's going to be over a couple weeks? Because um, I feel like that's just fun to mix it up. I like to do different things. Um, and that's not to say that we're, we're never going to do a one, a one class painting. Um, I just want to mix it up. So I plan on this one taking, I think this one's going to take three classes. Um, I guess it'll depend on how big your canvas is. You might finish sooner, but I feel like with the level of, I feel like we should go for a level of detail that we don't usually get to do in our one hour class. So I guess we'll see how far we get today and that'll kind of play it by ear, but I think it'll be three weeks, um, that we're working on this. So that <laughs> sounds terrifying. Caitlin, it's not terrifying. You're fine. So um, I did say on Twitter that a, a ruler or a straight edge would be desirable. When I say straight edge, that literally just means anything straight. So like a book that you might get a, some pencil marks on. Um, anything that's that's got a straight edge and a pencil. Yes, Caitlin. Um, I'm going to use Sharpie so that you can see it because if I drew on pencil on this, you would never be able to see it. Um, but there's going to be a lot of things like lines that you're drawing to then go back and erase, which I won't be able to do. Um, so yes, pencil, or I mean, if you have like colored chalk or anything that's easy to erase. Um, <laughs> so not Dean Winchester, what? Oh, I, I'm late on that joke, yes. Um, <laughs> yes, I am brave to use a Sharpie. I'm doing it all for you. Um, so I've got a giant ruler straight edge here, um, T, T square. This is a T square, by the way. Um, it just means that you could put it, you put this up against something um, and then you have a perfect right angle. Anyway, we're, we're going to be starting with this one point or single point perspective. So this is like the most basic type of perspective there is where everything goes back into one spot. Uh, it's called the vanishing point or single point perspective. Um, now you might think instinctually that that has to go into the middle of your canvas, but it doesn't. Um, you absolutely can have everything converge on the middle, um, but I think it's even more visually interesting if you go a little off to the right or the left, or maybe it's like not smack dab in the middle. This is where you're gonna start to think about kind of what you want your painting to look like before we even draw it, <laughs> um, which is cool and exciting. Um, so, which it, it doesn't usually happen with our class, right? Cause I, I paint something, I show you what we're gonna paint and you just go for it. And if you wanna change the color here or there, you absolutely do that. But now we're like, we're gonna create something new together. Um, so I think a city block or suburban block or whatever, um, a street is usually the easiest way to get this um, single point perspective down first. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing that you have to do, again, if you just came in, I'm using a Sharpie, but I am not advising you to use a Sharpie because there will be things that you probably want to erase. I'm just gonna put an X over those lines and cover it with paint, like I'll gesso over it in between our glasses. But um, I highly recommend using a pencil or something that you can easily erase or cover. Um, so we're going to decide where we want our vanishing point to be. Um, everybody's vanishing point can be a different spot. So you don't have to put yours exactly where I put mine. Um, but it's just going to be one spot. So you don't really need a ruler for this unless you really want to measure your canvas and put it in the dead center. I'm just going to eyeball it and I'm going to put mine off to the my left a little bit, the left of the canvas. So this is about the middle here. And I'm gonna say, okay, that's my vanishing point. It's really exciting, right guys? That little, little dot right there. But here's why that dot is so incredibly important. That is where everything is too. So that's where all of our like lines are gonna start. Um, 
in photography, I don't know if they call it this in like drawing, I can't remember, but in photography that's called leading lines, lines that draw your eye into your, your subject or the central um, part of your uh, picture. So now that we have our, our vanishing point where everything is going to converge, we're gonna start to build our street. So again, I'm doing this in Sharpie. Please do it in pencil in case you change your mind. Um, I'm The first thing I wanna do is I wanna say, actually before I draw anything, let's talk about what elements you might want in your street scene. Um, you don't need all of them, but just something that um, to think about. Um, Caitlin, how high up should it be? That is up to you. If you want a very low perspective, like if you want it to be pretty low on your canvas, you'll probably have really tall buildings or a lot of sky or both. Um, if you want it to be kind of even, Steven, with like the amount of buildings you have, sky and, and street, you can go more toward the middle. It's really up to you. Um, if you want to, let's say, have a big street because you want to put some kid riding their bike in the front of your canvas so it looks like he's on the street and you want to leave room for that, um, you absolutely can. So that brings me back to what could you possibly put on the street? I think there's a couple of main elements that I think of right away. Um, and now this is also keeping in mind that I'm from multiple suburbias in the United States. So if you're wanting more of a cityscape or a like, you can even do this with trees instead of buildings, honestly, but I think we're gonna stick with buildings. Um, it's gonna look different for everyone. But I see a street, and by street, I mean like paved asphalt kind of vibe. I see sidewalks on either side. So street, sidewalk, I see buildings, um, and, then, and then sky. And now on that sidewalk, we can put things. Um, on your street, you could put things. You could put like a manhole cover or, like I said, a bike if you're wanting to, to go that far. And we can explore that like as we go further into class, but just things you, you wanna keep in mind. Also, buildings are all different heights and widths. So we're gonna start, when we get to that line, we're gonna start with the absolute tallest building that you want. Um, and then I'll show you kind of how to build down from there. So I'm gonna put my street in and I'm gonna say, that's why you want a ruler. Um, <laughs> like how I just did that and didn't explain anything. You're just gonna put your ruler up to um, your vanishing point and then pull it out. What I'm doing is I'm determining this triangle that I'm doing right now is gonna be my street. So this is how wide or how narrow you want it to be. If you're wanting a really narrow street because you want this giant building right here front and center, okay. Um, I'm going to build out my street a little bit here. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's good. So this is my street. I know, it looks like a triangle, but I promise it's going to be a street. There's not really, when, we, when we're using a ruler, that you think of rulers for measurement a lot of times, but we're really just using it for the straightness of it. Um, and there isn't really too many rules. I didn't want to bring it out all the way to the corner because I did want to leave room for sidewalks. Um, not to say that you couldn't have it if you brought it all the way to the corners, um, but I'll show you what I mean. So now I want sidewalks. And I have to kind of decide how how wide they're gonna be. So this is my sidewalk, okay? Um, that looks good. And now I wanna try, because sidewalks are kind of uniform, um, <laughs> so far this class is A plus, maybe we just stop here. Okay, yes, I've, we've got two triangles. Um, because sidewalks are uniform, I wanna, I wanna kind of make them about the same width. <laughs> so I'm actually going to measure this and wow, that is, I just drew on. Mine is exactly at the widest point, two inches. 
Yours does not have to be. It depends on the size of your canvas. It depends on what you put in there already. But mine's two inches, so that makes things easy. So I'm gonna go here and draw a little line where my two inches is. And then I'm going to bring it up to the vanishing point and connect it to that line. It's very difficult for me to, to do this vertically. <laughs> so I'm like pushing it. It's okay, I'll figure it out. I'll get my act together. Okay, I lied. This is impossible for me to do vertically. <laughs> I'll sort this out, don't worry. Okay, I have to just go below it. I can't go above it. That's my. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now I know that that does not visually look like they're even, but that's just how perspective works because by putting this dot off to the side a little bit and not smack dab in the middle, I'm already creating a situation where things are not going to appear the exact same on either side. And that's why I like to do that because even though we are creating right now mirror images, they're gonna look different just by design. Um, so that's my sidewalk. Now thinking some little extra details, sidewalks and then streets, there's, there's a curve there. So I wanna put a little bit of a curve. So I'm gonna go on the inside of that first line. Doesn't have to be terribly big. You just want a little bit of a lip there. So just a little bit of a lip. Now, am I gonna go crazy about measuring this? No, let me see. Uh, okay, that looks like a quarter of an inch. So maybe I will measure it, quarter of an inch. Cool, got it. And I'm gonna go do the same thing on this side. Okay. So, sorry, I did a really bad job of priming this canvas. You can see everything under it. So now I've got my sidewalk. I've got the little curb lip right there. And then this is the part you walk on. And this is the street. All right. How are we doing so far? Is this giving everybody anxiety? Part of me, part of me almost likes that, not giving you anxiety. I don't want to cause you actual turmoil, but sometimes it's nice to stress out about something that's not actually stressful. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but there's lots of really horrible things to be stressed about. Um, and it's kind of nice to just not be stressed about those bad things and just be stressed about drawing lines on the canvas. Um, I wrote curb on the curb to remind me what it is. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll be adding details to this so that it makes a little bit more sense. Um, and you'll see why there needs to be more drawing with this, um, et cetera. Okay, stressed about it and it's nice to not be stressed about work. See, yes. Exactly. You're stressing about something that's of zero consequence, but like right now, right now it's what matters to you, but it doesn't actually matter if that makes sense. I think you guys understand what I'm saying, but yeah, that's, that's why I like doing this because while I want it to be relaxing, sometimes it's also just nice to not think about anything else, which I feel like right now I'm drawing attention to all the things I don't want to be thinking about. So I'm going to shut up. Yes, Miranda, yes, Miranda said, I'm waiting for Illy, that's me, to say, but it's fine if you did it a little different about this drawing, please. Yes, it's always fine. Absolutely, that's the whole point. As long as the general concept is that everything goes back to one spot, then there's no wrong. Now, if you've done this, like let's say you've taken art classes before and you've done this before and you wanna do something different, go for it. I know some people just like, watch me talk. That's cool too. 
Um, but yes, it's fine. Everybody's just going to look different. Okay, so now we want to talk about the tops of our tallest. Well, I guess it doesn't have to be our tallest. Top of a building. Let's think about what you think you want the top of your building to be. Now, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> That's what I'm here for to watch. Aw. That's cute. Um, okay, so we got to talk about our tops of our building. Now, if you want really tall buildings, you're going to do a steep line. But then keep in mind that this is all going to be building. So I generally don't want it to go all the way up here, unless there's a specific reason for it. Like if you wanted, okay, let me think of a specific reason. If I drew a line all the way up here and then this whole area was building, then maybe the building would end here. This would be an alleyway and this could be a really cool like graffiti wall. Ooh, I kind of want to do that. Okay, I might do that. You don't have to do that. <laughs> and I'm not gonna do it on both sides. So you'll see what I mean by do that. Um, but yeah, that's a kind of interesting idea. Okay. Um, these can be houses or office buildings. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, the house situation, you would probably need some additional visual references for like how rooftops look. Cause I'm picturing these mostly as buildings that have that flat top. I think that's just easier, but if you're wanting to put some actual houses in there, um, and you want to like go off script a little bit, absolutely. I was thinking mural wall when you said that, yeah. Oh my gosh, yes, give me ducks. Um, okay, so this is why I want you guys to be doing this in pencil because we're gonna draw a line that's going to create the tops of our buildings, but we're not gonna just have solid, like you may not, I mean, rephrase that, you may not just have a solid wall of buildings. You might wanna break it up with a tree or a pond or something. So you'll want to be able to erase the top of that building there or cover it easily. I'll show you what I mean. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do that graffiti wall mural thing idea. That's kinda cool. I've never done that before. So I'm gonna say, that's the top of my buildings here. And then, I mean, I guess in theory, they should be similar, well, I guess they don't have to be similar because why would you build the same buildings on both sides of the street? I've just had a street lights people oh moment. <laughs> I like that. I'm not, ever, I'm not gonna make you do people. I will show you when, if we get to that point ever, um, how to do like a people like silhouette shape maybe um, proportion wise, but I'm never gonna make you paint like small detailed people. Um, okay, so I want these to be, I'm gonna make these a little bit lower. Okay, so now this is gonna be my sky. I realized that it still probably doesn't look like much, but we're gonna get there. Now, what I was saying, if you're having a hard time visualizing the, the wall thing I'm talking about, um, I'm gonna do that for you. If you have decided that you don't want to do this little half mural wall thing, then you don't have to. Um, but what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna take a straight line out and go down. Again, I'm not really measuring to make sure it's actually straight. I do have this T-square though, so I, I could actually make it straight. Yeah, I guess I'll do that. square that's why it's pre pretty awesome um okay so now when we do start placing the buildings again you're if you're using something that you can erase it's not as big of a deal i'm going to be careful to stop at the sidewalk i'm also realizing that with this idea my sidewalk might be kind of disproportionate to how big my buildings are but it's okay Okay, so this is gonna be like a corner of this first building that lives there. Um, and because I want this to be a wall that I see, I'm not gonna put a building here. So the, well, I'm not getting up, I'm getting ahead of myself. Just draw the line. Um, and then you can decide 
how wide you want this building to be. So I'm going to put it, I feel like if this is such a tall, big building with a corner, I'm going to make it a wide building. And I'm going to put another line there. So now this, this guy right here, is a building. I'm, I feel like I can hear you guys saying, yeah, sure, Illy, whatever you say. Um, okay. I'm going to say there's a, another building here. And... Okay, so I have one, two, three buildings. This could be a fourth, or I could erase this line and kind of put a tree here or something. I kind of like doing that when it's way back like that, because it is hard to do a lot of little details. So doing little, little trees and stuff um, is kind of helpful. I haven't decided what I want to do with that yet, so I'm just going to leave it. Now, what are the odds? What are the actual odds that these buildings are all the same height? I mean, I guess if it's a shopping center, they would be all the same height. Um, but not not always. So we're going to do the same thing on this side, and then we're going to start to think about if we want any of these buildings to be taller or shorter and what that will look like. Um, so, which starts, so which part should be wider? The corner facing us or the one facing? That's up to you. The one facing the street is like the storefront. So if you're thinking about um, like how wide of a storefront, there's all different ones. There's there's ones that are really narrow and then it's just a long, narrow building um, or there's ones that are wider. So that's up to you. The wider it is, especially for the ones in the front, like the more detail you go put on it, we can do an awning and windows and bricks and things like that. So, you know, I like the first ones to be on the bigger side just so that I have all of that stuff I can play with. Um, okay, so I'm going to do some buildings over here. And I'm going to make sure, I'm going to try to make them different. So I want a different number of buildings and I want them to be different widths. So I'm going to go with this guy right there. And I want them to end at different places too. So. Now, the beauty of this is that from our perspective, we don't see the tops of the buildings. We are below. That's why you, you have the buildings go up, because the viewer is here looking up. So we don't have to worry about what the tops of the buildings look like, really. If, now this is our horizon line, right? So if we end up making any of the buildings shorter than that, then we have to worry about what the tops look like. So let's say you wanted this building here to be shorter because maybe it has a rooftop bar. I'm, I'm not telling you you have to put these details in. I'm just giving you an example of why you would want to see the roof. Um, then when we went back in for our details that we're going to do next, it would the line would dip below and you would have the ability to see the rooftop. Um, okay, let's talk about how we change the heights of some of these. Um, you can do it one of two ways. You can build up. So let's say, let's say I want this building right here to be taller. Now with you having a pencil, you can do a taller roof line across the whole thing and then erase it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to just make it taller here. So you would still go back to the vanishing point. And I want this one to be taller, so I'm just going to go like that. Again, with a, with a pencil, you can do the whole line. And I'm just going to bring my roof up. And this is a, I'm ignoring that line. I just put a little X on it. So you see that I said, no, nope, I don't want the roof to be there. I want the roof to be there.
And what that creates is depth because now this building is going to go, like you're gonna be able to see some of the sidewall. So I just took a straight line and I put it there because the top of this building is disappearing behind this building. So that's our roof line. And I guess in theory that should probably be going up more. And this is where you're going to probably right now kind of eyeball it. Just like I eyeballed this line and I didn't do a good job of it. You're going to eyeball how this goes back in space. I'm struggling with words here. So you can do a straight line. And actually, that actually might make the most sense right here. So I'm going to do a straight line. I want to show you what I mean. Okay, so this is now like an alleyway and this is the side of the building. I think that makes sense visually. Um, it could also go back on a bit of an angle. So you could decide to bring it back further that way. Um, I, think, I think that makes sense for right now. When we start committing paint to it, maybe it changes a little bit. Um, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to, let's see. Yeah, I don't want a building here. So there's not gonna be a building there. And I think I will keep a building there. And then I want something to be higher here. So let's, let's raise this guy up a little bit. Why is my brain, I'm breaking my own brain. Let me see something. When in doubt, Google it. Okay, yeah, it does go back straight, okay. So these lines would be straight. So if you're making a taller building, the top of it is just going to go back straight. Same like this one. I was right. I knew I had a, a gut feeling there. Um, now let's say we do want to make one lower. Let's just see what happens. Let's say I want to lower this one. As long as you're lowering it and still staying above this horizon line, you're good. If you wanted to make it really short, and have it dip below, then your roof line is gonna start going down. So what happens there, I know I'm getting really confusing, but I just wanna be able to show you all of your options. So let's say this is a very short building. What happens then is that this line, this roof line, would continue back. So now, is my Sharpie gonna die on me right now? So 
So just this one building. And then this goes away. But then you can also see the top of this guy. So now this is your short building with your rooftop. Short building, it dipped, so this is our horizon line. It dipped below. And so you could see the roof of that one and you could see more of the wall of this one. So that's the wall. Why are your lines for the roof so short? But if I try to make it straight, it shows a lot more of the side. Hold up, let me read that again. Caitlin is asking, why are your lines so short for the roof? Your lines for the roof so short, but if I try to make it straight, it shows a lot more of the side like you showed. No, I'm sorry, I still don't understand the question. <laughs> are you saying like this one, how I brought it across? Because this right here, the square that used to exist is no longer part of this building. I chopped it off. So I chopped it off and because that's gone now, now this roof line has to extend back. Did that make sense? Like this here is part of this building. This doesn't exist anymore. And this, is part of this building. Don't actually do this, I'm just shading it in so that you can see where things belong. So I have the face of my taller building, but I can't connect it to the original line with a tiny triangle like you did. like a really long skinny triangle to connect to the original line. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's kind of what I did here. And what you can also do, which is, I feel like maybe gonna make everybody mad, <laughs> but you can push some of these buildings back too. So like if you want them to be at different depths away from the sidewalk, um, I could do that. But yeah, so you're going to connect it with a line. It's going to make a really small triangle. That was my angle cracking. Um, Caitlin, you can also, <laughs> I'm friends with Caitlin. You can just text me a picture if you want. Um, or if anybody's having trouble, if they want to post it on or send me a Twitter DM, just let me know. If you are wanting to set things further back, um, it would be easier with a building like a shorter buildings. So let's say I wanna set this one a little far farther back. I can do, I can take my straight edge. and say, this little building is going to have a garden in the front of it. So I'm gonna pull it back to here. And then this becomes part of this building. And then you can bring your roof line down again. So that's all part of that building. And then you would go back to your horizon point and say, okay, I want the garden to be this deep. Like that. So now this right here, 
feel like I should have another color to show you. I feel like that would make things easier. Mm -hmm. So now what I just did, I pushed this back. So this building right now, is right there. And so this is gonna be a little garden. This is gonna be a pain in the butt for me to paint over all the Sharpie. <laughs> Yes, Caitlin, that's, that's right. It's not a small triangle like yours. Yes, it is. Yeah, no, you did that right. Caitlin, sorry, I'm looking at your picture, Caitlin, and that's exactly right. So now this area here, I'm gonna put some like potted plants. This is on the ground. But again, if this is like not working for you, confusing you, upsetting you, don't do it. Just like raise one or two just so that there's a little difference here and there. And that's it. Um, okay. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to have this building here, a short pushback building, a little bit of a taller building, and then nothing. So I'm going to probably put like a, I'm just going to put like a tree here. Okay, just so I remember that that's why. Um, let's see, what else can I do? I'm gonna make this one a little taller. Mm -hmm. No, maybe I'll make it a little shorter so I can get some of my sky back. But I'm not gonna go so much shorter than it does this thing. So I'm gonna go here. Yeah, I'm gonna go here. But again, I'm not leaving, I'm gonna leave that middle one. So I'm gonna just say, here's my new roof line. This is going away. And then this is where that guy's gonna live. So. I've now created that this is a building. And this is where I could put like part of a mural, etc. And this is gonna be sky. So I've got Billy here. Oh, and then that means that I need to be able to, now that I shorten this, I'm gonna be able to see this, this guy. So this time, So what I did there is make this, The building. If I want to add a tree box to my sidewalk, how would that work? Yeah. Um, yeah, let's talk about some details now. If, if everybody is cool with the buildings, I, you don't have to do this much variety. I was just showing you how you can do variety. Um, so we can talk about some details. Um, Miranda, this is not for now, but how would you indicate the road went uphill? My city is built on seven hills. Um, hmm. That might need a street sign. <laughs> I mean, I do think, well, okay. I was gonna say if it's going uphill, then in theory, 
all your buildings would actually get progressively taller even if they're all the same height if it's if the street is lower and then it goes higher then see how i did shorter middle higher you would want yours to go all like that um kind of like i'm picturing my united states brain is picturing um san francisco because they're all on hills and so those those houses are all like they're all the same height but because one's lower and then it goes up like this you can you'd be able to see it so shorter, taller, tall, like progressively taller, even though they're going further back. Does that make sense, Miranda? I think that makes sense. Um, okay, so first of all, sidewalk details. First of all, let's make it look like a sidewalk. That's how houses work here too. The houses are like on steps, yes. Okay, so to make it look like a sidewalk, I'm gonna put the lines, cause, um, the concrete is poured in squares. In theory, you should like, they would be progressively getting smaller as you go further back. So I'm gonna do my first one right here and I'm not gonna go on the curb. I'm just gonna do the front part of the, I mean the top part of the sidewalk. So I'm just doing those lines and then I'm gonna move up here. And go a little further back here and do another one. And then we'll get closer together. And I'm just resting my um, my ruler on the previous lines so that I know. And I'm gonna make this one actually a little bit shorter. They're, uh, three, and a little bit shorter. And even shorter. Now, what I will say is if you've decided that, um, like, you have to think about if this sidewalk is going to keep going back that far, or if you want to kind of level it out. You know, if you decided that you don't want buildings that far back, I think I'm still going to have buildings here. So I'm gonna have like a another building there. Um, and then these little guys, I'm just gonna like kind of eyeball because they're really small and they're really close together. So even if you decide to have trees, like the trees are still lining something, right? So they they're gonna. I realize that I'm explaining things and it's so small that you can't see it. So did the sidewalk lines. They got closer and closer together as they go further back. And I did the same on this side. When I got to about here, it wasn't worth me using my, my uh, straight edge anymore. So I just kind of eyeballed it. Um, and then to show the depth of the curb, you're going to make those lines go straight down on the other side. So from that corner, you're gonna just pull it straight down So, see how it goes straight across this way and then straight down. Kind of like these lines. How these lines go straight down. These are going to go straight down also. You could use your straight edge. I just kind of eyeballed it because it was such a small area. <clears throat> I feel like I'm giving everyone anxiety. And I'm giving myself anxiety over all of this Sharpie that I have to paint over. But it's okay. So this is a building. And this is a building. Cool. Um, now, if you want to put something on your sidewalk, um, like a, a tree box was mentioned, I think it is going to be very dependent on if you have a wide enough sidewalk for it. Um, I think I could probably do one maybe here. Um, you're facing it. So the front of it, the side that we see is going to be a square. Um, depending on how big it is, it you might want to use this. Um, 
It's also something that you can worry about afterwards. So if you don't want to draw all your details now, if you want to do the base painting, which we're going to do next week, and then probably going to do our details the third week. Um, if you want to then draw it on top of that, that's cool too. But if you'd rather kind of sketch the whole thing out right now, that's, that's all right. Um, we did railroad tracks. Yes, I have, I think for my first drawing class, I have to see if I can find it. Um, a train. Yeah, they did railroad tracks. Um, okay, so if I want a little tree box, I'm going to find my point. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space from the curb. I'm just going to kind of decide how big I want that guy and how tall it's going to be. So I'm going to say it's going to be this tall. So this is the bottom, this is the top. And I'm just going to draw a straight line down and a straight line down. And then you're going to make your like square or rectangular front. And so let's let me show you where I'm at here. I need to get a new Sharpie. There we go. So that's my little tree box. Now I haven't completed it. Um, you can use the same method or you can eyeball it for that back part. So that back part is, I kind of didn't plan it super well because it's kind of lining up a little bit with my sidewalk. Now, I also pictured like a planter box, which I'm now thinking is maybe not what you meant. Um, Cause now I'm thinking like New York where a box would be like cut into your sidewalk and it would just have dirt instead of sidewalk. So you could do that too with just a flat, like you could just create a flat square like that. Um, but that would be like if you wanted a planter or maybe you wanted a recycling or a trash. I don't know why you would want to paint a trash box, a trash box a trash can um, on your street, but I guess they would be there. So that's your little guy right there. Um, you could do the same thing if you wanted to do a car on your street. <laughs> like I would highly recommend just doing like a portion of a car. Um, yeah, the New York thing, cause that's how DC streets work. Okay, so let's say you wanted to do that. <laughs> If you want me to show you, um, you're really just going to take, you could do this visually. Um, I don't think you need your straight edge, depending really on how you're feeling, but it's, you're just going to block out that little square. So let's say you wanted a box cut into your sidewalk here to put, I'm just going to kind of follow that line. I'm going to now follow this line and I'm going to follow this line here and then follow that. So you're just kind of marking a little, like a smaller version of your sidewalk. And that's where you're gonna paint dirt and a tree, et cetera. So either way is fine. Um, if you wanted a car, let's say you want a car driving on the street. You can go to your horizon line. I'm gonna do a car that's like coming from right down here, which I realize you can't see when I'm pointing. Um, so I'm gonna say right there, and kind of roughly a car. I know it doesn't look like a car, it looks like a rectangle, but when you then kind of bring this side down, 
You can then put a roof on it. That whole shebang. You don't have to do that. I'm just giving you ideas for different details you might want. Um, let's see. Oh, we can talk about details that you would put on the building. So buildings generally have doors, right? It's kind of how they work. Um, so you're gonna want, again, use your straight edge. Everything, this is the, the vanishing point is your like cheat sheet for knowing like if something is gonna be above or below the horizon line. So let's say I wanted doors on here. You get to decide how tall these doors are. So you gotta kind of look at the proportions of, now that I'm looking at the proportions, I feel like this car is giant, but it's fine. I'm probably gonna paint over the car or I can make it be baby, whatever you guys want. Um, so I'm gonna say the door here, it's gonna be maybe at the horizon line. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Hmm. I don't think I like that. Let's see. Yeah, I guess that's fine. This would be like giant doors. Like I kind of see them as like sliding doors. You can even kind of split them in two. Oops. Split them in two, have them be like those kind of doors that open when you get really close to them. Um, let's say you want a, and now all these buildings are gonna have doors. So you kind of have to decide how tall your doors are. Um, and kind of put it in. So let's give this one the door and this one's going to have a short door. to be smack dab in the middle of the building because every building is different. Um, and then, you know. If you want windows, same rules apply. So you could do a row of windows. Let's say, let's say this building is going to have a row of windows toward the top because maybe this building has a second floor. Um, so I'm going to say there's and then you can connect them. Again, you can be using your straight edge for as much or as little of this as you want, but this is like my row of windows. Those are so crooked. It's fine. If you want an awning on one of these. Just not over all my markers, it's good. Um, how would I draw a small balcony on a building? Like at the top, like you want an interesting roof line or you want it like a window that has a balcony? I mean, I can show you both. If if you're wanting something to have an interesting roof line, like you could always kind of just like add some like architecturally interesting things on the top. If you're wanting to like swoop and connect, you can give yourself, you know, whatever you're feeling. If that wants to have a fancy roof, I'll show you what I did there. So I just give myself like little faux pen, uh, faux pens, faux pens. 
fence posts <laughs> um, and kind of like swag them with rope or, or what have you. Um, this is Stephanie. No, like an apartment building balcony. Okay. Um, that's a good question. Let's see. Let me think about it. So let's say there has to be a window first, right? So I'm just going to do it here since I already drew a window, but you don't have to put all of your details on all of your buildings. Like mix it up. Give yourself a balcony somewhere. Give yourself an awning somewhere. Um, let's see. Okay, so it would follow the same rule. So let's say you did, you did a window like this, then you want to come down a little bit for your, like where you're gonna stand. And you'd probably want it to come out a little bit further. Um, no, that's not working for me. I might just have to freehand it because my brain is working. Okay, so your balcony would come out further. This is me brainstorming, so you don't have post pens, yes. Post pen. I would not stand on the balcony. Um, it's my different color. So I can make that stand out for you. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do for a balcony is you're gonna pick the corner that's gonna be closest to you to start from. I think that's probably the easiest way to, to kind of explain it. So you'll pick a corner, like right there, and then this is gonna go back towards your window back towards your window yeah. and then it's going to follow the same oh. same lines here so from your corner you're just going to stretch it back across your window to the top and also the bottom Yikes, what did I do? Don't listen to me. Do you really need a balcony, Caitlin? <laughs> um, okay, let me, let me just keep thinking about it because I keep screwing up this balcony. <laughs> um, for a window on the closest building facing me, would it just be straight, no angle? Yes, if, if, if it's on this wall facing you, um, unless you've decided to take these and angle them back, for whatever reason, um, yes, it would just mimic whatever this shape is. So if it's facing you, um, it would just be square. Caitlin, you figured it out? I'm glad, I'm glad you figured it out because I didn't. <laughs> um, I guess that the main concept would be that it has to come out further than the building and further than the window. And I was just trying to brain that out and I, I was not doing well with braining it out. Um, okay, for a window on the close, yes, okay. Stephanie, if you were looking at the window head on, I think so. Yes. Okay. I realize now that Stephanie was just answering the question for me. <laughs> okay. So we're about at that hour mark. Does anybody have any questions um, about like a feature that they want to add that they want me to try to figure out? Um, I really feel like awnings would be cool and they're pretty easy. I feel like they just angle out so I'll make this in green so you can see it so you could just angle it out over your door like that would be an awning coming out over the door and look guys right now this is super flat 
But things that are kind of like blending into each other, when we paint and we start putting shadows, you'll be able to tell that it's popping out. Okay, so I'm going to call it the end of this class. Um, now for next class, if you want to keep doing some drawing details and, and futzing with it next class, I think our goal is going to be to start painting. Um, but if you need any help with details, feel free to post a picture of it and tag me and I'll try to help you. Um, like I can probably sketch it and send you a picture back or if you don't want to post it on Twitter yet because it's not done, um, you can always DM it to me. Uh, so I did not solve the balcony issue, but <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I'm having like a, I feel like I want to figure this out. Okay, so if this is a window, Now I'm just eyeballing it because it's bothering me. Okay, if this is like a big window that you would walk out of, then your balcony could come out here. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, that makes sense. So, balcony. It would just be another box that's wider the closer it is to you. And then you can kind of add some guardrails. So like a balcony, I think the whole um, thing of it is that it has to come out further than the building so that you can see that it's a protrusion. And then when we paint, you would put a shadow under it. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at with the balcony situation. Okay, all right, you survived guys. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited that you guys are wanting to add fun details. And um, I'm sorry that I don't have all the answers, but sometimes you just have to kind of brain it out. Um, and don't be afraid to mess up and start over. It's totally fine. Um, cool. Well, I'm going to clean some of this up before our next class so it's easier to follow. And I'll add some more of my doors because none of these buildings got doors. Um, and then I will see you next week. Bye. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Miranda's like, manhole covers. Yes. Um, ovals. Like, because they're going back in space. So they are circles, but they're circles that you're now stretching back in space. So it would probably be like a... Like a that kind of jobby. And then again, when we paint it, we would make it look like it's not just a circle sitting on, a fl on, on the ground. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. All right. See you next week, guys. Bye.